Hello everyone, welcome back to Focused Survival. Day 4, huh? Well, since we made it this far, let us skip the pleasantries and get right to it. Let's start with a callback to yesterday's goal. You built a forge. You also probably crafted some iron tools if you had time, if not, time to craft them today. But what if you didn't? What if the forge and the tools and every other goal I've given you so far couldn't be achieved? Well, you'll just carry on and try to get it done eventually. For now, let's assume you have a forge and you crafted the pickaxe and all the other tools and weapons I listed in yesterday's video. So, what is today's focus, you may ask? Well, that depends entirely on what you want to do. If you want, you can spend the entirety of this day mining or cutting down trees and you can use these materials to upgrade your base if that's what you want to do. And if this is the path you choose, well, I guess you best close the video now. See you in the next one. For those of you who may want something different than that, the actual focus of day 4 is exploration and scavenging. These two activities depend on each other. So, first of all, it's time to scout around you. Either look around or climb a hill or build your own tower and see if you can spot some buildings in the distance. Or perhaps you're already in a settlement and there's buildings everywhere around you. If that's the case, then you can simply start scavenging. I'll get to that in a second. If, however, you can't spot any buildings, exploration almost becomes a fool's errand at that point and you're better off gathering materials or doing anything else. But if you're hell-bent on exploring even though there's no buildings in sight, I have some solutions for you. The first solution is to just roam around and look for isolated structures such as cabins or campsites and just loot whatever you find in there. If you're at a campsite, you can always tear down the tents to get cloth, as I've already mentioned in one of the previous videos. The second solution is to just play whack-a-mole with zombies and check their inventories. Some can carry objects that can prove to be quite useful. You can also use the map to plan yourself a trip. The way you do this is by opening the map and moving your cursor around. As you do it, you'll see some numbers. These are coordinates. You're going to want to mark coordinates around 0, 0. Don't worry if the waypoint doesn't have surgical precision. Just marking a general direction will do. The way you do this is by right-clicking and either marking a permanent waypoint or a quick one. The permanent waypoint takes a couple more seconds to mark, so make sure you're not surrounded by the dead when you do this. The reason you mark 0, 0 is because that's where the center in random gen is, and there's usually a city around the center of the map. So walking there can be your best bet. You may also blindly follow roads and hope they lead somewhere interesting. Another option you have if there's no buildings in sight is to walk towards the trading outpost if you haven't already and spend your day just setting up a base close by. Once you have located the settlement or chosen which road or direction to follow, you'll need to manage your inventory. So go ahead and store unnecessary items in your base and carry with you some basic materials such as wood or stones as well as weapons, food and water. Do not forget your tools though, they are necessary for breaking into buildings. You should also carry around a bit of forged iron with you to repair the aforementioned iron tools. Now that the prep work is out of the way, let me elaborate on the main focus of today. Let's assume you've walked towards the center or followed the road, or you're rapidly approaching a settlement you've spotted earlier in the distance. Once you arrive there, the exploration part of today is completed. That's it. It's done. But before we move on to the scavenging phase, we need to set up a temporary base in one of the houses here. I recommend you to either find a block like this one or a two-story building such as this one. You walk in, you demolish the staircase just like I taught you in the first video, and once you're comfortably inside the second or third floor, you'll build certain utilities such as a campfire and some storage chests. This shouldn't take you too long. Afterwards, you can simply proceed to search the neighboring buildings for valuables. We call this process scavenging. Scavenging is pretty simple. You see a container, you search it and you take what you find if it's useful. Since your temporary base in the settlement has storage chests inside, you can simply take everything and when your inventory fills, you empty it into the storage boxes. Then you'll quickly return to the task at hand. Or you can just build storage chests outside the houses you scavenge and store the junk items inside. Don't be tempted to throw anything because it's all useful. In this game, hoarding is a virtue that can save your life. However, in order to hoard items, you'll first need to find them inside these buildings. But there is a slight problem. Most houses are locked and you're going to have to break in to get to the loot. This can be done with a primitive stone hatchet, but having iron tools can speed up the process significantly. Inside these houses you can most commonly find food and water if you raid a kitchen, clothes in the nightstands, perhaps even some medicine in the first aid cabinet. You can sometimes even find a handgun hidden away in a toilet. 
But there's more to these settlements than just simple residential homes. If you know where to look, you'll find a lot of valuable items and most buildings have loot specific to them. Gun shops, for example, are a good place to obtain firearm parts, while bookstores contain all kinds of schematics that teach you to craft one thing or another. There's also construction sites, hardware stores, pawn shops, pharmacies and all kinds of various buildings with their own specific type of loot. Keep it in mind that some of these POIs have huge interiors like this facility right here and it can take you quite a while to pick them clean. You should also be careful when you're heading inside buildings and be prepared for resistance. There's usually a lot of infected nesting here, waiting for the right opportunity to sink their teeth into the flesh of an unaware explorer. If you go inside, double check every dark corner because the sleepers may be lying in wait. Later on in the game some of these zombies can even be feral, which means they'll be able to run during the day as well, so if their eyes are glowing, kill them as fast as you can. Some of the loot containers you can find inside buildings, or more specifically safes, are extremely hard to crack even with an iron pickaxe and without it, it's damn near impossible. I do remember one time when me and a friend took refuge in a cabin for one night and, since we had nothing better to do, we tried to open a gun safe with our stone axes. We broke a total of 4 stone axes and it took us the entire night, but the gun safe was cracked open and the reward inside was worth it. No, no, no items inside, just dust. But the real reward was a lesson, a lesson to never waste time and energy cracking open gun safes without proper tools. That's just one of the reasons I made you build a forge and craft tools yesterday. Now you may wonder, why go through all this trouble to gather valuables? Can't I just survive on my own with primitive tools and weapons? Well, you can try, but every single week there's more and more zombies attacking. The hordes grow more powerful and so must your defenses. If you're able to hold off the first two feral hordes with a bow and a bat, these will not suffice in the third. You will need a strong base, powerful weapons and deadly defenses. You can only obtain these by trading and by scavenging, because these two activities complement each other perfectly. Basically you scavenge so that you can find good stuff like a shotgun or an assault rifle, but until you get these you'll find a lot of things that aren't as good and you're going to have to trade these for dukes. Then, if the trader has something really nice in stock, like a really good weapon or tool, perhaps even an auto turret, you'll use your hard-earned dukes to purchase that thing. Basically, the wealthier you are, the more protected you can afford to be against the endless hordes. Your end goal is to have a base that not only can withstand the strongest zombie hordes, but can also allow you to be self-sufficient. And by self-sufficiency, I am of course referring to the ability to grow your own food, make your own defenses, as well as manufacture your own munitions and weapons. But until then, this tutorial is here to guide you through the first steps and provide you with short-term solutions. But this was it for the main subject, I think I explained nearly everything about the scavenging and exploration. For the next minute or two, I'll just talk about the situation that happened to me in a survival save game that I'm playing on. In day two, I got myself scratched by one of the zombies and I became infected. Now, let's talk about infection. This affliction has multiple stages. The incipient stage is pretty harmless, only affecting you with some slight exhaustion and can be cured by just consuming a bit of honey. You're able to find honey in the inventory of some zombies, especially these two. You can also find it stashed away in hollowed out tree trunks, such as these. Or you can simply purchase honey from the trader if he has some in stock. But if you can't find any honey to cure your infection in about 3 days, your infection will move from the incipient stage to stage 1 and the exhaustion will be a bit more severe. From this stage onwards, the only way to cure this ailment is by using antibiotics, which can be found in medicine cabinets or pharmacies or cooked in a beaker or chemistry station, as I've already explained in the previous video. Or you can get lucky like I did in the same survival save game and find antibiotics inside the nurse zombie's pockets. And I suggest you to cure your infection as soon as you can, because as time progresses, so will the infection, and the exhaustion effect will be difficult to ignore, and shortly thereafter you'll simply begin losing health until you drop dead. How does this tie into the subject of today? Well, since you're scavenging you should not forget that medicine is vitally important for your long-term survival and as such you should do your best to find some. Anyway, I believe this was all I could share about this subject. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Focus Survival and found it informative and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.